boys. You having fun? That's fine, fine, fine. Anything you want, you just ask for Smaxy Gold. The Golden Goose is yours. Hey, hey, boss. Don't call me boss, will you? They're democratic. Call me Mr. Golden. Yes, boy. I mean Mr. Golden. Say, look, ain't there somebody out there we know in the khaki? Excuse me, boy. Excuse me, too. Hello, Snaxy. How are you? Uh, this is my partner, Mr. Talbot. Delighted, I'm sure. In the South Pacific, I thought you would. I'm back this morning. On leave? No, I might have to take a medical discharge. What's the matter? Well, that poisoning. Is that catching? Oh, go away, squirrel. Will you go outside and see how dark it is? Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the squirrel, my bodyguard? Not that I need a bodyguard, but for a guy in my position, how would it look to have one? Come on, I'll find your tail. See, this table is reserved for a personal friend. Well, for my friend, the ace here, your friend, can give up his table. Go on, take your friend away. He called me up, personal. Boys, boys. Come on, Rob. He's always doing this. Mr. Talbot? They seem quite put out. Oh, that's just Rodney and Winston. They're a couple of my partners. The business looks good. This out here, this is just a byproduct. The real dough is back in a game room. Uh, by the way, Mr. Talbot, maybe you would like to take a little flyer in roulette, craps, blackjack. Not tonight, Golden. No? Well, maybe there's something else I can do. Yes, Maxie. <laughs> Ken Graham's wife works here. I, uh, I dropped in to see her. Oh, you're acquainted with Elaine? No, he met her after I shipped out, but they were married almost immediately. Say, by the way, just what happened to Ken? That is, if it's not a military secret. Yeah. On a raid over a ball, Jap Zero got on our tail, machine gunned us. Got Ken back to base, but he only lasted a couple of days. Well, that's tough luck. I'm awful sorry. I was lucky. Excuse me, one of my partners. Sometimes like this cause a lot of trouble because of the hat. A little trouble back in a game room. Well, it's a penalty for being an entrepreneur. Stick around. Ken Graham. So he got killed and left us holding all those IOUs. Didn't you hear me say I was sorry? Tell me, Ken. Just what is your interest in Elaine Graham? What do you mean? Well, she's the widow of your best friend. You might think you owe her something for his sake. Well, I do whatever I do. You don't owe her a thing. You're the one for me Just as every fish has a lovely dish That he swims with in the sea You're the one for me You're the one for me Just as every bat who's as blind as that Has a bat that he can see You're the one for me Nightingales or practice bass scales When love goes by Just as every moose who is on the loose finds his ammo you're the one for me. Ken's wife. You're the one for me. Just as every gnat likes to hang his hat where a certain gnat might be. You're the one for me. You're the one can't ever marry a girl like that. He was hitting the bottle pretty hard the last few weeks before he left. And owning some of the best timberland in the country didn't hurt him any with her. Camels blink and run for a drink when love goes by. Peace the chumps get covered with bumps and so do I. So it's plain to see. Just as every goat makes a mantle note when he spies his dreams on tea. You're the one for me. Why don't you take a rain check and leave now? No, I promised Ken I'd see her. Even shrimp are bound to get limp when love goes by. Unicorns would 
toot their own horns and so will I. So it's plain to see dragons spouted fire for their heart's desire and I do the same for thee. You're the one. Very nice. Oh, uh, baby, why don't you come up to the office a little and visit? Not me, Smacky. I'm getting athlete's heart from running around that desk. Oh, baby, that ain't no way to talk. <laughs> See, those are nice boys. Yeah. <gasps> oh, well. The head waiter told me to come in. Oh, he did. Does this go with the two-dollar dinner? I don't understand. Look, Captain, go dig yourself a new foxhole. This one's private. Well, I'm sorry. My name is Russ Evans. Uh... Russ Evans? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't give me a chance. Well, Lil, you remember Russ Evans, Ken's friend? Sure, the guy he was weaned up with, uh, up among the big squaws. It's quiet. Yeah. Don't you sit down? Yeah, yeah, let's all sit down. Kind of oh, Lil, why don't you go hustle up a drink, huh? You know, that's what keeps me so fast. Go hustle up a drink. Go get the bottle. Go get this. Go. <laughs> you were with Ken when he... when he died, weren't you? Yes, I was. He asked me to give you a message. He told me to tell you that he was sorry. Sorry for what? Well, he seemed to think that he had failed you in some way. By not coming back, I guess. Poor kid. He didn't know that you'd uh, come back here to work. Oh, well, I had to do something after he left. You, uh, you didn't know Ken very long before you married him, did you? About two weeks. Two weeks. What do you mean, before I married him? You mean I married him what I could get out of it? I didn't say that. But that's what you meant, so why didn't you say it? Go on, say it. Well, I... I told Ken I'd come and see him. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh-oh. -uh. No, you don't. Who does he think he is coming in here passing judgment? Oh, please, Lil. Listen, you. All she ever got out of Ken Graham was two of the happiest weeks a girl ever had, see? Yeah? Yeah. And a mortgage big enough to choke a cow. What happened to his timber holdings? Who got those? That's where the mortgage comes in. He borrowed $30,000 on those timber holdings, and then he proceeded to scatter his dough in every joint in town till he was broke. And furthermore, it was after he lost his dough that she married him. Not before, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? Hey, your name is Evans? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> The Scrooge who pulled that fast one on Ken and tied up his land for a tenth of what it was worth? That was your partner, Mr. Harold Talbot. Is this on the level? Oh, now I suppose you're going to say this is all news to you. Well, I didn't know. I, I okay, didn't... Bub, out. The exterminators are waiting for you. Well, I... Yeah, and if you happen to break anything on the way out, be sure it's your neck. Ready to go? Sit down. Let me go in there and make a chump out of myself. I did. Why don't you tell me you tied up Ken's land? We did. Talbot and Evans Incorporated. I had your power of attorney. Now, you let me take care of the business, and you take care of your flying. So you made me a partner in an underhanded trick. Now, don't get excited. Ken wanted the money in a hurry, and we made a smart deal. In 60 days, we foreclose on the track and start cutting timber. Well, get this. I don't want any part of it. Ken was my friend. His widow's going to get every nickel that land is worth. You can't do a thing without my consent. I can pay her myself, can I? I can sell my share in Talbot and Evans. Our contract happens to prevent that without a full year's notice. I don't know how my father ever got tied up with a rat like you. You can see me tomorrow when you cool off. Oh, no, we can settle this right now. Get out of my... Hey, look, I'll fight! Get out of my... Out. 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 Sorry I couldn't let you bust him up a little more, kid, but after all, I'm running a class joint here. I just can't allow it. What's the matter? What was it all about? I see that's what you call breaking up a partnership. See you later, Father. Don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of him. Hey, Joe! Wait a minute.
Uh-oh. Elaine. Dracula's in again. I thought we finished last night. Well, first of all, I want to apologize for making a chump out of myself. Well, now, ain't that sweet? Well, if you'll only listen, I can tell you how to get your property back and put it on a paying basis. Go ahead and talk. Well, I didn't know what Ken's deal was, and when I found out my partner chipped him, I, we had a row. Well, maybe we better hear some more, huh? Come on in. Sit down. See, Talbot and Evans had a contract to buy all the logs that Ken could cut and deliver. Now, here's my plan. We can cut $30,000 worth of logs in 60 days. That would get your property back. Get out your nail file, darling. We're going to start cutting timber. You're exactly right. We've got to have $10,000 for labor and equipment before we can start. Oh, only $10,000? Oh, well, I thought maybe between the three of us, we, we could dig up $10,000. You know, it's funny, but I haven't met a millionaire all day. Now, wait a minute, honey. That ain't the right attitude. Let's, let's think this thing over. Oh, uh, who do we know with $10,000? Whom? Yeah, whom? Whom do we know with 10000 bucks? Okay. So here's the IOU. So what? Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. $9,000 worth. $10,000 worth. Mr. Russ Evans came in a while ago. If he was such a pal of Ken's, why wouldn't he want to pay off and clear his pal's name? That uh, Talbot and Evans outfit's plenty healed. Will uh, Evans pay for his pal? Oh, I can't ask him to do that. The guy's dead. That kind heart of yours talking again? Listen, I got sensibility. That sense of who's that he's of yours will run us into the ground. Now look, you let this guy get into us for 10 grand. Now you'll ask his pal for the payoff or else. Look, or else. Okay, okay, you don't have to blast. Trouble with you, Rodney, is you take too many vitamin pills. He's in there right now. You'll go in there, and you'll ask for the dough. All right, I'll ask. Don't push, don't push. Look, boys, don't rush me, don't rush me. I cannot get my best results if I am rushed. No, it's no good. We just don't know anybody with that kind of money. Ah, oh, wait a minute. There's Jack Percy. No. Is Everett Jerome? Ah, oh, no, you had to go and slap his face. Well, there's got to be somebody. Smaxie ought to... Hey, what about Smaxie? But well, what about him? Ah, uh, no, this is too legitimate. He likes to gamble. Well, if I know Talbot, there'll be a gamble in it. Well, listen, there's no harm in asking, Smaxie, anyway, huh? <laughs> Nothing ventured? Nothing ventured. Oh. And don't forget what we told you. Look, not another way. I know just how to handle this situation. Oh, I, I was just coming looking for you folks. <laughs> we were looking for you, too. Uh. Yeah, well, uh, what I wanted to see you about had something to do with uh, Ken Graham. This has too. Well. well, then it's probably the same thing. <laughs> Come on, step right in the office, folks. We'll talk it over. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. Squirrel, send for some drinks, my friend. Right. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Uh, now about the, um, the business. Yeah, about the ten grand. How'd you know? Oh, I am psychical. Besides, I got the IOUs right here. IOUs? Yeah, Ken Graham's. That's what you came to see me about, wasn't it? To pay me the ten grand? Well, we came to see about the ten grand, all right. And uh -huh. we came to see about Ken, all right. Yeah. But uh, we didn't come to give you the ten grand. We came to borrow. Yeah, you can... No! No, it's squirrel. Yeah, the refreshments will be right up. No, never mind the refreshments. Lock the door, will you? All Lock right, the door. See, what's the matter? Uh, no, see, it's just my partner, eh? Might upset him. Oh. <laughs> now, what was this about ten grand? Well, you see. Uh, uh, let me explain it to him, huh? He's a double fisted gent with a single track mind. It's like sticking your hand in your pocket and finding ten grand you never do your head. Don't start buying mink shorts. We ain't got it yet. That's right. We won't. Smacksy have got it. So you see, Smacksy? You have it. I have it. Yeah, you could save the whole thing for Elaine and be making yourself a couple of bucks, too. 
I can't do it. Why not? Business is romping. Or ain't it? I gotta unmask myself. I have been living a lie. Maxie, you ain't gonna tell me I got a wife and ten kids statched away in some safety by the box. It's worse than that. It's worse. You know I've been making out like I'm the head man around here. Well, I ain't. You're not? No, it's my partners. Oh, I got a small percentage. They put me up in front because I look good in this suit and because I got class. And you haven't any money? No. I would have. The gambling room had been going good, but frankly, golden eggs, the golden goose ain't been laying. Just eggs. But boss, what about the ten grand in the safe? Smacksy! You got ten grand in the safe, honey? Now, wait a minute. Listen, folks, it ain't mine. That's bank-breaking dough. Bank breaking dough. Yeah, in case some sucker gets hot out there in the gambler room, I gotta have that cash on hand to keep the game going. But Smaxy, that ain't happened yet. No. Well, beauty, what are we waiting for? You had to open your big mouth. I can't do it. Why not? I can't take the chance. So you're a great guy in a tuxedo and you've got class. You say. But when it comes to being a gambler, you couldn't bet your way out of a nylon stocking. Baby, you don't understand. What's there to understand? Here's a proposition that's right down a gambling man's alley. There isn't one chance in a thousand that you'll ever use that ten grand in the safe, is there? No. All right, you want to get back your partner's money for Kent's IOUs? I got it. All right, then. Lend us the money. We deliver the timber, pay off the mortgage, pay you back the ten grand and the IOUs, and everything we give you on top of that is just so much better. Okay, I'll do it. Smexy baby, angel oh, pie. It, Where's the thing? Right over here. Come on. What's the combination? Don't Maxie? rush me. Don't rush me. Everybody rushes me. But boss, supposing some sucker busts the bank and the partners start asking for the bank breaking money. In that case, my golden goose is cooked. This must seem sort of funny to you, Russ. Mean. Well, there's frying out of uniform. Oh, I should hope to tell you. Hey, do you think Talbot will give us any trouble? He well, was sore as a boil on Ross that I told him we were quitting to go with you. Maybe you should have stayed with him, Joe. Can't guarantee how this thing's gonna turn out. Listen, your old man gave me a start before I ever heard of Talbot. How about you, Rosen? Here we go. All times, huh, Russ? Sure does. Where's Milton Barney? Oh, they're probably around someplace. Well, but they're inside washing up or something. Mill! Hey, Barney, look who's here! Hello, yo, Banshee. How you feeling? Good enough for this. Got my medical discharge from the Army yesterday. Golly, Russ, it's good to see you. Hiya, Barney. Any more of that blubber in the trees won't be able to hold you. Go on, he's still the number one tree topper in this neck of the woods. You got Talbot chewing his nails. First you grab off his best tree topper, then his best woods boss in Rawson and me. Swell, engineers are scarce. Say, have you taken a look at the equipment? I hope you're not figuring I'm using that logging engine. It's beyond revival. Oh, that's bad. How you gonna move your logs? Well, I got 17 men coming up besides the girl. Girls? Yeah, I thought they would get you. Look, you and Rawson go on down and meet the train. You come back with the men, and Rawson will bring the girls back in your car. You got that a little twisted, haven't you, bub? I'll bring the girls. All right, have it your own way. <laughs> you know what? The more I think about this deal, this year it looks. What, you mean Russ fighting his partners for me? Well, what's he got to lose? He's still got a half interest in Talbot and Evans, and if this deal works, he gets half of Ken's loan back, and if it doesn't work, he gets half your property. <laughs> he wins no matter how you figure it out. But, Mill, he didn't have to do anything. Yeah, I know. That's the only thing. Oh, he's got an angle there somewhere. Hey, maybe it's you. Oh, now, don't be funny. Uh, I don't know. You don't know men, right? I do, I... Thinking... 
When you reach my girdle, if it climbs any higher, it's gonna choke me. Oh, thanks. terrible road, isn't it? There must be some other way to arrange this. Could be. Hey, look. We're back on land. Oh, that's mighty thoughtful of you. <laughs> mighty sweet. He's gonna fix this. <laughs> you get in the front, honey. Did you say you were born in San Francisco? No, I didn't. Oh. But it was. Really? Now, that doesn't seem possible. Oh, now I'm supposed to say, why not? And then you say, well, because I've lived there all my life. And if you'd lived there too, surely I'd have met you before this. That's just what I was going to say. It's been used before, but it's still a good line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be fun working with you. I'd much rather travel this way than by car. Virgil, put him on. Hello, Joe. You shouldn't take a chance calling from up there. It's all right. Russ and Barney have gone out to check the equipment. He's working shorthanded. Seventeen and all. Only seventeen men. Well, he hasn't got much of a crew. Just play along for the time being. Without a logging engine, he'll have enough trouble without us making any. Hey, wait a minute. Somebody's coming. I'll talk to you later. Here we are. Are you all right, Lil? Oh, great. Hello there. Hello. Got them here safe and sound. Speak for yourself, John. Oh, Lil, it's beautiful. Well, it's all yours. I hope so. It's going to be a hard pull, but I think we'll lick it. Let's get this luggage out of here. I'll take these. Well, thanks an awful lot. As usual, holding the bag. Oh, here, I'll take them. And thanks a lot, the room's swell. Lady, will you come and help me? All right, Lil. You got something mighty nice in that, Elaine. Well, I'm just protecting your interests for Ken's sake. Sure, sure, I just thought that... Well, then as far as you're concerned, the field's wide open, huh? Oh, sure. Well, that's good to know. Don't let them take your mind off your work. I will. Here's the layout for the skyline right here. I've spotted the head spot tree right there. Now, all these others are 250 footers. We can use them for the tail spars. Yeah. All within the radius of 2,000 feet. Couldn't be better if I'd planned it myself. Barney, you start topping at 6 in the morning. 6 o'clock, I'll be there. All right. That's fine, but what do we use for a logging train? What's the matter with the old flume? It hasn't been used for years. It's shot. We can repair it and shoot the logs down into Graham's Creek and then down the river to Talbot's Mill. Oh, that's impossible. There's a saying in the Air Corps, the difficult we do immediately. The impossible takes a little longer. See any angels up there, Barney? Get the phone number for me, will you? I'll be a little too busy for that, Mel. You go. Know.
Go away, go away. You didn't feel like dancing. I do now after taking a look at these figures. Take a look, Elaine. If we keep going at this rate, we'll have enough logs down the river in four weeks to pay Talbot back. Oh, Russ. I really owe you an apology. What for? Oh, for any doubts I may have had. Oh, forget it. I owe you an apology. I had you tabbed all wrong. Look, are you two gonna let all this good music go to waste? I'll say we're not. Why don't you go read a good book, huh? Okay. I give up. Temporarily. <laughs> Couldn't find a place. There ain't no numbers on these streets. Sure, but you're out in the country now, oh. kids. Not that fresh air. Mm. Hey, you guys. That'll be 37 bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Here, you call it. Double or nothing. 37 bucks. Well, double or nothing and make it 74 bucks. What do you think I am, chump? A chump? Oh, no sporting blood, eh? Okay. Hey, Russ! Russ Evans! Come on, eh, will you? The love of Peter Smaxy. Now, what drove him out in the fresh air? Hiya, Kissy. Uh, how glad to see you. Hello, Hello sir. Hi, Kissy. Hey, Hi. Hi. How'd you get here? Oh, Smaxie took a taxi. Look, I'll tell you all about it later, kid, but first pay this bad sport here, 37 fish. Yeah. Oh, sure. There you are. There. Plus uh, 50 cents, making a total of 37.50, for which go buy yourself a war bond. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> and don't cash it in. <laughs> well, kids, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, I think we can have a lot of fun up here. Just... Smacky. Yep. I think I'm gonna like it here. Smacky, what happened? Well, uh, you remember the ten grand I had in the safe, the bank breaking dough in case the sucker got lucky? Well? Well, the sucker got lucky. And the partners are out looking for us. Yeah, so rather than stick around and discuss the matter with him, uh, we took a little taxi ride. Yeah, you see, we knew a fellow who discussed it at once, and it was his last disgust. Ain't you got no tact? Oh, sure. Well, we figured we'd come up here, you see. In the first place, it could serve as a hideout, and in the second place, I can protect my investment. Maybe pay the dough back, and then all is forgiven. <laughs> you can bet on it. Well, how do you like it up here, sugar puss? Oh, Smaxie, it's just wonderful. Ain't it beautiful? Look at the forest. Forest? I don't see nothing but trees. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. Ah, it's a great thing, this exercise. Gives you an appetite, eh? Sit, Chase Bull. Yeah. Hey, Smaxie. What? What's that? Squirrel. Well, what? What, what? I don't want nothing you do. Then what are you calling me for? All I want to know is, what is D-H-A-T? Squirrel. What do you want? Look. You asked me what is that? Yeah. That is a squirrel. Somebody, you don't see no resemblance? At this rate, they'll have enough timber out in three weeks to put that girl in the clear. And what do you want me to do? You've got to do something. Smash some equipment and stop them. Keeps a guard up there on the track on the phone. Wait a minute. That night watchman he has up on the skyline. He's a sucker for the bottle. Now you're talking. 
With the skyline down, they'd be in a pretty bad spot. Yeah. <sighs> What's the matter? Tired? Mm-mm. Just the moonlight on the treetops. Oh, I told you to do that, Teeth. I feel sort of guilty, though. Russ hasn't relaxed in weeks. He didn't have to go to Savoy for supplies. He just wanted to give us a break, honey. Now, you promised that you'd behave. Say, where is this place you were talking to me about where you can see all the lights? I'll bet there isn't any. Oh, yes, there is. Just keep going. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, that hurts on me. Oh, it's him. He's dead to the world. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Listen to that. Lexi, what's that? It's a bird. Huh. Fifteen years in show business, and I never heard a bird like that one. <laughs> it's a mockingbird. Gee, listen to him, huh? Yeah. It's springtime. He's calling to his mate. Hey, you hear that? She answered him. It's a love call. The smell of the trees in the forest. It does something to me. Yeah. It does something to me, too. You know? It does something to me, too. It makes me... It makes me want to sneeze. <laughs> Smaxie, did you ever think... Everybody in show business always dreams about having a little house in the country and raising chickens. Yeah. No, no. When I was a kid, I used to raise chickens. You did, Snaxy? Yeah. In a box hanging out of the window on the sixth floor, right next to the clothesline. Squirrel, ain't you sleepy? Oh, no, Stacy, I ain't sleepy. Yeah, no. You know, Lou, if I get out of this, I think I'd like to live in a country and raise chickens. What, Stacy? Yeah. Would you, Lou? And leave this world of strife behind. Oh, Smexy, you're so poetic. Hey, uh, Squirrel. Are you sure you ain't sleepy? Oh, no, Smexy, I ain't sleepy. Squirrel. From now on, you better stop drinking coffee. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to drink cocoa from now on. <laughs> What's that? It ain't the 4th of July. We better see what it is. Yeah. Look, it's Russ. Did you hear that crash? Yeah, I was on my way home. Come on. What is it? Oh, somebody smashed the skyline, cut down the head spar. What do we do now? Pick up the marbles? Pick up the marbles? Get Barney and Bursdale and tell them to meet me at the cottage. Where's Mel? Huh? Taking a walk with Elaine. Said something about Angel's Peak. Angel's Peak? Boy, oh boy, he's mad, ain't he? Something funny about this. What? Him getting here so fast. He's supposed to be in Sequoia. I got too early, that's all. I don't know. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I see a lights of twelve towns. 
Maybe the 13th is having a blackout. <laughs> Sue me. I wondered what you were doing. Like it? It's quite a trick. Oh, I'm full of them. Put your chin in there, I'll show you something different. Close your eyes. Now, Milt, aren't you ashamed? Oh, it's the moonlight. It makes me do things. Hey, you were supposed to be making the rounds tonight, weren't you? I know it. Russ, give me a little time, will you? What's the matter, Russ? Is something wrong? Not a thing. The skyline's down, that's all. The skyline's down? Like matchsticks. Okay, I know I should have been there. Go ahead and fire me. If I didn't need you, I would. Well, I guess that washes the whole thing up, doesn't it, Russ? Not on your life, it doesn't. It'll take a few days to rig a new skyline. In the meantime, we can be felling trees until the new skyline is finished. But, Russ, we haven't got enough days left. All right, then we'll work nights. You can keep your mind on your job. Come on, we'll help Barney find a new spot for a new skyline. Okay. Here you are, Barney. Thanks. Up you go. Are you still interested in those Angel's phone numbers, Milt? Sure, I'll have a change. I'll see if I can get you some. Thanks. See if you can't make this a record climb. You betcha, Russ. At it. Your men working. We're through. An accident like that can happen any time to a tree topper. It's got nothing to do with the job. We're quitting anyway. We're not taking a chance on getting what Barney got. Go on, get back to your jobs. We don't have to work with a lot of junky equipment. We can get a good job. Come on, fellas. Wait a minute. You put him up to this, you're working for Talbot. I ain't working for nobody. This job is no good, that's all. Nice going, Russ. Get out of here, you weasel.
Afraid we're through, Joe. No, I wouldn't say that, Russ. I'll see what I can do. We gotta go get the doctor. It's no use, Russ. He can't do Barney any good now. Lane. There's something wrong here. What are you talking about? Well, look, I don't like to be a calamity holler, but I got a hunch your boyfriend's putting on one terrific act. I don't get you. I know this isn't the right time to talk about it, honey, but this whole thing could be phony, you know. He could be just waiting for us to go bust, and then he'd collect his half. That's as rotten a thing as you could possibly say with him making himself sick trying to help me. Yeah, but listen, honey. I don't want to listen to any more of your nasty suspicions. Just don't talk to me about it anymore. Okay, honey. You've fallen for the guy. Gosh, Russ, I'd have cut off my left arm for Barney. Oh, forget it, Milt. Nothing you can do now. I've got to figure some way out of this. Well, you and I could build another skyline, but with only nine lumberjacks left, oh, it's impossible. To get the men we've got now, we had to comb every agency and spot you can think of. It's no use. Well, Lil and I can always go back to town and get some sort of a job. Oh, I wanted to make a go of this thing so it'd make it easy for you and Milt. Me and Milt? Well, that's how it is, isn't it? Oh, no. Gee, the other night I, I couldn't help but see you. Oh, no, that was just Milt's idea of a gag. Little boy stuff. <laughs> I thought... Did you ever think of marrying again? No, I haven't. Kind of can't? No. Why? I don't know. I just never thought about it. You better start thinking about it now. I am thinking about it. You big dumbbell. I'm going to bed. You and your big ideas. Me? What big ideas? Well, why don't you have one? Gee, I ain't no Einstein. Wish I could get a flash for those kids. You know, this affects you as much as it does them. Me? How's that? Well, if you don't get your dough back, you won't be able to show your face anywhere in town. Y you may as well join the Foreign Legion. Can I go too, Smaxy? Oh, boy, if the partners ever got their hands on me, to they... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Well, oh, no, I wouldn't wake up. Now, just a minute. What is it? Well, I just had a screwy idea that if I sent the squirrel into town to let the partners know where I was hiding out. Oh, it's a pipe. Hey, a few minutes ago you were saying you'd do anything. Now you got a swell idea, and you don't like it. Now listen here, Smaxy. You want to raise chickens with me, or don't you? Well, if you put it that way, I guess I gotta. Okay, Squirrel, you gotta go into town. Look. Oh, Smaxy, I don't wanna go in there. I like it up here. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. You stand get up. up. This may be a prank. Oh, good afternoon, boys. Don't give us any of that. Oh, we can take it easy, fellas. I'm very glad to see you, gentlemen. All right, get in the car. We're Come taking on, you on, for a on, breeze. On, on, on. Boys, that stuff went out with the button shoes. Yeah, but well, we ain't caught up yet. Get in the car. Maybe I didn't have such a good idea here. What are you talking about? You fellas seem to think that you've been looking for me. Well, you didn't, because I said for you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you still don't get it, eh? Look, do you just want to have the pleasure of taking me for a ride, bumping me off, or would you rather do something which will get you all your dough back and at the same time make you a hero which all the kids will remember in their history books? That's great. Hey. Maybe that is a nut house. Well, let's yeah. find out. Come on, come, come on. Get in there. Get out. Yeah. Oh, quiet. Oh, 
All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, look. You boys have all been beefing about how you'd like to do something to help the war effort, right? And I give my blood? Don't I try to join the Marines? So what do they do? Turn me down just on account of a little record. Yeah, exclusive they are. All on account of three little terms in Joliet. That's right. And you, Q-Ball, you got a kid in the Navy, eh? Yeah. And Rodney, you almost made it, didn't you, till they found out about your bad ticker? It stole on me. It had to skip a beat just when the Sawbones was listening in. There you are. Now I know that you gentlemen are all patriotic citizens. Well, here is a chance for you all to be heroes. You still get your dough back. How? By string along me in this proposition like I told you. By enlisting the great fight to provide wood for the war effort. It's essential. What do you take the use lumber for? Toothpicks, uh, toothpicks, toothpicks, you dope. What do you think they make those barracks out of to keep the boys in, and the ships, and the airplanes? What? Wood, 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 what else? Now, come to think of the church, that's not my family, you know? Now, boys, you know what we need, don't you? We need a lot of good, strong guys, and we need them in a hurry. And if there is any guys that can round up guys in a hurry, it is you guys. Leave it to us, Maxie. We'll get them. Yeah, that's good. Now, uh, wait a minute. You know what we need? Sure. Four Fs with muscles. Very good at this sort of thing. Oh boy, this is something. Wait, I gotta show this to Russ. Hey, Russ! Hey, how many eggs do you think a chicken will lay in one year? Ask some other chicken. I'm busy. Uh oh. We better go ask some other chickens, Maxie. Where are we gonna find a chicken at this time of night? <laughs> The day of tomorrow, they'll have enough logs boomed up in Graham Creek and up that river to beat you four ways from Sunday. They can't float logs down the river without water. What do you mean? You got plenty of water. You give up too easily. That spot's on our property, isn't it? Oh, you mean the Narrows here? Yeah. Well, sure, I helped you to buy it. What would happen if the steep sides of that narrow stream caved in accidentally? Well, it'd dam up the river. Let me show you something. River plus dam on our property equals river minus water on Graham's property. Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. What was that? I guess Russ dynamited the boom and let the logs down the river. He wouldn't do that without the rest of us being there. I guess not. We'd better find him in Birdsville. Those explosions came from up the river. Yeah, let's go. I better get over the skyline. You get off the track as fast as you can. Looks like Tarvin's got your lick, Russ. Yeah, one day. One more little day we'd have won a match. Now, well, that's that. Nobody will float any logs down that river. How much dynamite have we got? Not enough to crack that dam, if that's what you're thinking. Look, you and Milt take all the dynamite we got, 
and plant it down that boom. Ready to have the logs go down the river when I get back. Where are you going? To town? What for? Beat Talbot, I hope. I gotta have some help. Uh, hey, you squirrel, you go with me. In a plane? Yeah. What's the matter, squirrel? Are you afraid? Who, oh, me? <laughs> yeah. Hello, you. Hi. Oh, hello. You taking the day off? Can you take it on the chin? What's the matter? She jilted again? Not as bad as all that. Talbot's got the river dammed up and all the logs are jammed. Oh, Russ, what are you going to do? I'm flying to town. Come on, get it up. They haven't got us down yet. Talbot paid you to do it, didn't he? No. Sing, Weasel. What's going on out here? Cut it out. Oh, Wetzel caught this guy sneaking through the woods. He's the skunk that dammed the river. There's no doubt about it. Are you going to talk or aren't you? Are you going to talk or do I have to give you a going over? Come on, Rawson. We'll put you up to it. Come on, spill it. You guys can go on being suckers for Evans if you want to. But I'm not going to take any beatings for him. Evans? Yeah, he's the guy who engineered the whole thing. That's a lot. Do you believe that? You don't believe it, do you? I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Well, I haven't got time to argue. I got a job to do. Those logs we all swept to get in the river. They're still on this property. And they will be tomorrow when Talbot and Evans clamp down. Oh, baby, take it easy. I don't get this. Me too. Do you think that... No, no. If there's any double crossing going on, the kid didn't have no part of it. Take it easy, boys. Let me figure it out. Don't I always figure a way out? Why don't you ride into town with me? Maybe we can find a nice, quiet joint somewhere and have a good cry in our beer over friendship and stuff like that. No, Mel. I'm all mixed up now. I'll wait. If that's what you want. Well, this is where I get off. It's been nice knowing you. Thanks, Mel. I tell you, the guy was not putting on an act. I got intuitions about those things. That's why I'm such a good gambler. Oh, that's a laugh. Listen, if this guy doesn't come back, and he won't, what you're gonna need between yourself and your partners is distance. Listen, he'll come back. Don't talk like that. The guy is true blue and a yard wide. Maxie, what makes you so sure of that guy? Uh, one mouse is just like another. As soon as the sun stops shining, you turn the other cheek. Okay, Smaxie. That's the way you feel about it. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. Little baby. Yeah. Are we gonna make with the chickens? No. No chickens. No chickens. Well, I'm gonna put the dynamite in the boom anyway. For what? Well, Russ must have had some idea in his mind. I'm going to string along with him. Okay. You take your exercise, Faxi. I'll see you in town.
What are you worried about? I tell you, they're absolutely through. Yeah? And where did Russ go in his plane? I don't know, but you can take my word for it. There's nothing more he can do. Hey, look. Don't tell me they haven't got something up their sleeves. They're getting ready to dynamite the log jam. Tie these clothes up. Right. Here. Nice of you to drop in on us, Mr. Talbot. Hey, maybe you change your mind about Russ now, eh? Sure, but if he had an idea from the start, why didn't he let us know about it instead of running off like that? Hey, Smacks. That's Russ now. Look. What's that underneath the plane? What is it? I don't know. I'll get the glasses. You watch these guys. He's got it rigged up under the ship. Yeah. Homemade blockbuster. Boy, if he drops that in the right spot, it'll do the trick. What a stupid sucker like me. All suckers are stupid. You stay here and take care of the boom when the water comes through. I'm gonna get the girls and meet Russ. Be right over. It's no good. Get ready.
Go on, right, Russ. Walked away from us. Oh, Russ. Oh. <laughs> you sure did it that time, Russ. Plenty of water now, huh? Good work. Lucky it wasn't burning, Russ. Yeah, yeah. Lucky it wasn't burning, Russ. Now is the proper time to push this thing down. Not with me out there. What's that? Smaxy, he broke the jam. He did? Smaxy did it! Oh, Lane, we're in the bag! You see, you was premature. Dope. On your feet. Come on. We'll get your friend. Come on, walk on. Let's go. Follow him. Step loudly, gentlemen. Yeah. Look, 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 I never did like them guys. Like Talbot, eh? Hey, uh, Talbot, come on. Take care of him. Like yeah. Mike, yeah. cut him over to you, boys. You oh, it's Maxie, my hero. <laughs> oh, we'll cut it out, yeah. I'll put my chips on you anytime, Russ. What are we, partners? I was telling a squirrel. Hey, where is the squirrel? Yeah, squirrel. Hey, you saw him last, didn't you, Russ? Uh-oh. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Ain't that cute. <laughs> 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 